Hello students, and welcome back to another lovely day of physical science. In this lesson, we are going to be solving for a line of best fit. And more specifically, we are going to be analyzing students' test scores versus the time that they spend studying. So here, there were six students that took a 40-question test. What I would like you to do is draw a scatter plot that compares the number of hours with the score received on the test. And then you need to find the equation for line of best fit, and then there will be a couple prediction questions as well. So please make sure you pay attention to what is your independent versus dependent variable, and then plot this correctly on the graph. So on the graph, I would also like you to choose your increments that you would like for each axis. So please pause this video now and try and solve for where the points would go, your line of best fit, and then we will see how you do. All right, now that you have had a chance to try this, we're going to go through and graph all this data. So in order to graph the data, first thing we need to do is label our axes. And in this case, our independent variable, that is our x-axis, is going to be our time studied. Our dependent variable is going to be our test score. That is the number of questions correct. So in this case, the way that we know that is that time studied is what you are able to control. It's your independent variable. Your dependent variable depends on your time studied. So the score that you got on your test depends on the time studied. The time that you spent studying does not depend on your test score. So we go through and we would add in these different increments. Oh, and we would also need a title. So a lot of times we can just title this our Y axis versus our X axis. So in this case, test score versus time studied. So for time studied, I would just number these 0 through 10. For test score, we can just go 0 through 30 since that was the highest points that anybody earned. And if I were to plot these points, it would look something like this. So we have the point, you know, roughly 1, 5, 4, 15, um, 5, 14, 7, 23, roughly, 8 hours studied, and scored 22, 9 hours studied, and scored a 25. Then if I were to draw my line of best fit, I would draw one like this. Again, a line of best fit might vary for you. You might have a line of best fit that looks like this. That's okay. You are estimating the points. You are trying to find a linear relationship between all of these dots. Or you might have a line that looks like this. It's okay because it's your line of best fit. It's, it's going to be an estimate. There's not a perfect answer. So if I look at my line of best fit... Again, I'm going to pick points that are relatively easy to find the exact point for. So I'm going to pick one that crosses, you know, three hours and, say, roughly a score of 10. Then I'm going to pick one a little bit further away. And I might pick this one up here because it intersects on this point pretty well. So therefore, I know it is nine hours studied, and they earned a score of about 27. So those are the two points that I'm going to use. Now, what I would like you to do is, on your own, if you haven't done this already, is to please pause the video and try and solve for your line of best fit. That is, try and solve for your y equals mx plus b. And I will actually show you an answer here in a little bit, and your answer should be pretty close to it. So please pause the video and try and solve for your line of best fit. Okay, now that you've had a chance to try that on your own, your answer should be pretty close to y is equal to 2.83x plus 1.5. If you use the points that I did, that is, if you used these points 3, 10, and 9, 27, this should be your answer. However, if you used your own line of best fit and your own points, it just needs to be pretty close to this. So, if you got this answer, you're welcome to fast forward a little bit until you get to the next slide where you can try out those practice problems. If you didn't get this, please follow along as we solve for it. So first thing I'm going to do is utilize those two points. We have the point 3, 10 and 9, 27. Now we need to label those as you know x1, y1, and so on. I'm going to consider this my first point. Again, it doesn't matter which one you use. You'll get the same answers. I just like to think of this as point 1. So if this is my first point, that means that this is x1, 
and y1. That means this is my second point, so x2 and y2. Okay, we did that. So we chose our two points. Now we need to solve for the slope. And slope has this equation of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So therefore, we're going to take 27, because that was our y2 value, minus our uh, y1 value, divided by x2, which is 9, minus x1, which is 3. And when you take 27 minus 10 and divide it by 9 minus 3, you're going to get 27 minus 10 is 17, divided by 9 minus 3 is 6, and that gives you an answer of 2.83. Again, in science, we don't keep stuff in fractions. We don't want to leave this as 17 over 6. Uh, we want to put it into decimal form. So you get an answer of 2.83, so therefore your slope is 2.83. Then we need to find our y-intercept. That is, we need to find our y equals mx plus b. So what we're going to do now is there's three different steps. We want to plug in the value that we found for slope which is our 2.83. We want to plug in either our x1 and our y1 value, or you could plug in x2 and y2. It doesn't matter. It's your choice, and you'll get the same answer. Again, I just like to plug in x1 and y1, so I'm just going to plug in these points. And then we solve for the value of b. So if we plug in our y1 value, that had a value of 10, and that's going to be equal to our m value, which was 2.83, times our x1 value, which was 3, and again, I just use this little star um, to mean multiply, plus our value of v that we're trying to solve for. Well, again, following our order of PEMDAS, so parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, we're going to multiply 2.83 times 3, and that gives us 10 is equal to, and again, our 2.83 times 3 is equal to 8.5 plus b. What we're going to do now is we need to get b by itself. Well, since this is 8.5 plus b, what's the opposite of adding 8.5? Subtracting 8.5. So we're going to subtract 8.5 from the right side, but whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I'm going to subtract 8.5 from the left side. So right here we have 8.5 minus 8.5, well, those are going to cancel out and just give you an answer of 0. Therefore, we find that b is equal to 10 minus 8.5, and you get an answer of 1.5. So now we know that b is equal to 1.5, and remember, b is your y-intercept, that is, it's where your line of best fit should cross the y-axis. So if we take a look at our graph, Hey, that answer makes sense. Following our line of best fit, it should cross right about 1.5. So that answer seems to make sense. Then all we have to do is write in our m and b values. And therefore we get y is equal to 2.83x plus 1.5. And that is your final answer that you saw earlier in this slide. Now what I would like you to do is please pause the video and try and predict the test score for a student that studied for 13 hours. And then I will show you the answer here in a few seconds. Okay, now that you have had the chance to try this out, the answer should be close to 38.29 correct answers. And that is, so if a student studied for 13 hours, their answer should be close to 38.29. And you can see it down here, our graph actually doesn't go up to 13. So we want to use this line to predict what a student's score would be if they had studied for more hours. So let's go through and see how we found this. Uh, if you got an answer close to 38.29, you're welcome to fast forward to the next slide as practice. If you didn't get 38.29, please follow along as we solve for it. So here, y values are test scores or numbers correct. That is, if you look at our y axis, that is going to be your test score. So we're solving for our y variable. 
And this is for a student that studied for 13 hours. Well, 13 hours is going to be our x axis, so therefore it is our x value. So what this question is asking us to do is to predict our test score when given time studied. Well, we have this equation from our previous slide. We already found this. This line has an equation of y equals 2.83x plus 1.5. Well, we're solving for our y value, and we have an x value. So all we're going to do is take that 13 hours and plug that in for x. So therefore, we get y is equal to 2.83 times 13 plus 1.5. So again, you follow your order of operations. That is PEMDAS. So 2.83 times 13, and you'll get y is equal to 36.79 plus 1.5. Well, now you just add those together, and you will find that y is equal to 38.29, and our units for y is correct answers, or 38.29 correct. And that is your final answer. Or what we could do is we could use this equation a different way. Let's say I know that I want to score 46 correct questions. Granted, I realize I said earlier that the... It was only a 40 question test, but we want to be really good. So if a student wanted to score 46 correct, how many hours would they have to study? So what I would like you to do now is please pause the video and try this question on your own. Again, I will show you the answer in a few seconds so you can see how you did. All right, so your answer should be close to 15.72 hours study. So if you got that, fantastic, you're done with this set of notes and you can move on. If you didn't get this, please follow along so we can see how to solve for it. So in this case, the student wants to score 46 correct questions. Well, again, correct questions are our y value, and they want to know how many hours would they have to study, or we could estimate how many hours did they study. And in this case, that is going to be our x-axis, that is, it's our time study. So what we need to do is predict the time studied when given a test score. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those 46 correct questions and we're going to plug that in for y because, again, that's the y value is their score. And this time we're going to be solving for x. So 46 is equal to 2.83 plus 1.5. What we need to do is we need to try and solve for x and in order to do that, we actually have to get rid of this 1.5 first. So what's the opposite of adding 1.5? Well, subtracting 1.5. So we're going to subtract 1.5 from both sides. Well, plus 1.5, minus 1.5, those are going to cancel out. And then you take 46 minus 1.5, and you will get an answer. 44.5 is equal to 2.83 times x. And now it's pretty similar to the last problem. What's the opposite of 2.83 times x? Well, the opposite of multiplying by 2.83, dividing by 2.83. And again, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So therefore, we're going to divide by 2.83. On the right side here, 2.83 on top. Cancel out 2.83 on bottom, so that way we're left with just x. Then we take 44.5 divided by 2.83, and you will get an answer of 15.72 is equal to x. So therefore, our answer is x equals 15.72 hours studied. And then we think, does that answer make sense? Well, yeah, it does. Here you can see if a student studies for about 9 hours, they'll score about 27. So if they study for 15.72 hours, yeah, that would seem about right. So there you go.